All right, guys. I feel like I preface a lot of my videos by saying I don't know what I'm doing. And generally that just means like I haven't done a specific thing before, which is like not a problem. I love trying out new things, but I don't know. Just know that I'm not a professional by any means. So I'm getting ready to pour an epoxy floor in my camper van. So I've got all my stuff here. The van is prepped and uh, I was kind of playing with a couple different ideas. So I didn't like record any of the prep work but I can quickly just walk you through kind of what I was thinking and what I did to get ready to do the epoxy pour. And around the edge of the van, because I have like this plywood down, especially like on the door openings, I had to create a barrier so that when I pour the epoxy, uh, it doesn't just like spill over. So around the like entire outside of the floor, I have either like framing or like these one by two pieces that are up against the wall. And then uh, like these pieces on the, the opening. So by that side door, there's that, this same trim. So once the floor is poured and hardened, uh, these pieces by the openings, I am gonna have to remove. And so I even, I put in like this electrical tape because I figure it would be easier to be able to get the wood off and then peel that electrical tape off rather than the epoxy hardening to that wood and having to like grind it off or cut it off. I don't know. I could have done, I guess like wax or some type of like release agent, but the tape was convenient. I had it on hand. So we'll see how that goes. And once we get to it, you'll see if it worked out or not. Um, and then kind of like some overkill because some of the boards on the outside, it looked like there was a small gap between like the framing wood and the floor if it wasn't perfectly flat. So I just took a bead of uh, just like silicone and went all the way around the edge with that. That way I don't have resin like getting into those cracks and like seeping out. So hopefully it should be good to go. I also took uh, like some filler and went over like all the little nail spots and then like the crack in between the board there. So same thing, just so we don't have epoxy like coming out. So I've got my two part mix here and uh, I've just been kind of reading up with the instructions that came with the resin or epoxy, epoxy resin. I actually don't know the difference or if that's one and the same, but whatever, the instructions that came with that. And I've got a bowl to be mixing with. And then this is the pigment that we're gonna be adding um, so hopefully that makes it really pretty. And then some safety stuff, mixing sticks. And then I found this, uh, it's a head to like a egg beater that I just found in a box of stuff that, I don't know, someone that used to live at this house left behind. But we don't actually have like the mixer, like the head handle part. It's just that one piece. So I was like, I can use that to uh, stir up the resin. So it should work pretty good. I'm gonna do it in two pours because the instructions were like very clear, do not mix all of this at once. Cause there is like a chemical reaction that happens and there's like some heat that's let off. So I'm gonna do it basically like half of these containers, which I've just made a mark on them. Um, I'm gonna do half of it, pour it down. Hopefully it's looking pretty good. Pour the other half um, and then get that poured onto the floor as well. So I don't know, I'm new to this. We'll see how it goes. I've uh, never done this before. I've watched a couple of videos and uh, I'm sure I'll get questions like, why are you even doing that? I just think it's a cool idea. I've seen some people do them in like cargo trailers or uh, like toy haulers. So normally I do like vinyl flooring, but I've done that so much. And I don't know, this just seemed like kind of a cool thing to learn. And it's a little bit more unique. You don't see it very often or at all. And maybe there's a reason for that, but I don't know, I figure if this doesn't work out, then I can just put vinyl on top of it anyways. So, I don't know, it's worth trying. It's like not that expensive, so let's see how it goes. I do need to get the van moved to the street uh, because I work in the driveway and it's sloped. So if I was to pour it right now, I think it would just like slowly run and uh, wouldn't lay even. So gotta go park on the side of the house. Oh, one other thing, um, it is kind of warm out right now. I think it's about 90 degrees. So to reduce like the bubbles in the resin, I'm gonna be like mixing it thoroughly, but also kind of slow 
so I don't get like a lot of air bubbles mixed in there. And then a lot of people will use like a heat gun to like get those bubbles to raise out of the resin. Hopefully when I pour it, I don't have too many air bubbles to deal with. Um, it's also gonna set quicker in warm weather than it will in cold weather. So hopefully if there are some air bubbles, they kind of just rise naturally because of the temperature outside right now. But yeah, if I need to, if I really see like, oh yeah, those, there's like a lot of bubbles in that and they're not like rising, whatever. Um, I do have a heat gun that I can grab and start like going over it, but I'm not gonna be, once it's like poured, I'm not gonna be able to reach like a lot of the middle section. So I don't know, we'll see what I can get to. It's basically just gonna be um, what what's within arm's length. So let's get the van moved and uh, mix some of this up and pour it. I have it parked on some two by threes uh, because when I first parked it, it wasn't like very level because of the gutter. So I don't know, it's pretty good now. It's not perfect, but I think it uh, should work out great. So let's mix up the first batch. I'm gonna do, um, I found just from reading online that with the pigment, uh, you wanna do, I think it was between three and 4.5 ounces per gallon of resin. So because this is one gallon total, each of these are a half gallon, uh, and that is 5.3, I believe. Yeah, 5.3 ounces. So for each half pour, I'm gonna do just under half of the pigment, and I'm gonna add that to the hardener first because the directions say to um, pour, how did it word it? Like you wanna pour the epoxy into the hardener rather than the other way around, which I don't know the reason why, but I'll pour out half of the hardener, get the pigment mixed in, and then put the, uh, the resin into the mixture with the pigment. I don't know how I'm gonna move this camera around. Like, I don't know where I'm <laughs> gonna set it in the different spots as I pour, but I don't know, we'll start with it there and then see how it goes. I marked these uh, to basically like split them in half because I'm doing two pours. But this uh, bucket I have has measurements on it so I can just do exact amounts. Um, I'm gonna ignore the marks that I made. So we're doing hardener first. Can tell right away the, uh, the hardener is a lot thinner than the resin. There is 32 ounces. Hey, that is right on my line, actually. That's pretty good. Uh, this I'm gonna be doing more of an eyeball with. That is all over the place now. Just like barely took the top off and there's like glitter in the air. You probably can't even see it on the camera, but that is very thin, like very fine particles. But it's safe for like bath bombs and stuff. So hopefully I don't have to be too worried about it. Like breathing it in, I mean. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna start with the stick before I use the uh, the drill. Oops, Cause I don't wanna disturb that too much. Just get a whole bunch of it in the air. You know in Harry Potter when uh, the, the first one, when Voldemort is like drinking the, uh, it's like unicorn blood I think. That's exactly what this looks like. Let's see how this does.
<laughs> that works so good. I feel like that's mixed pretty good. And it's gonna get mixed in some more once I put that hardener in, so let's uh let's do that. All right, once I get this mixed, um, you're supposed to mix it for three to five minutes and then let it sit for three to five minutes before you pour, according to these directions. Let mixed components stand in mixing cup for three to five minutes. This will allow for any bubbles to rise to the surface. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna mix it for four minutes because that's what three to five minutes means. And then let it sit and then start pouring. It's mixed up pretty good and I started uh, just kind of tapping it to help those air bubbles because there's definitely been plenty coming up so I don't know. I think it's good. I'm also like standing right in the sun, so I'm definitely sweating and that's fun. Um, I don't think this is going to be enough to cover half this floor if I'm doing the whole thing with two pours. I don't know. I don't know how far that's going to go, but if I need to get more, I can. Shouldn't be hard. I get this stuff on Amazon, so take like a day to get here. Then I just have to finish up tomorrow. But we'll see how far it goes. I gotta wait like another uh, minute and a half probably before I start pouring that. All right, I'm going for it. Let's see how this goes. I might use a stick to kind of push some of this around. It is not going very far. And it seems pretty thin, but at the same time, like it's going on pretty thick, it feels like. Like I can definitely move this around. Yeah, let's do that. I wish I had like a roller that like elevated it just a little bit. It could spread it like a consistent amount. All right, coming inside. I like how it's coming out. You can definitely see um, like all kinds of tiny little bubbles coming up through it. And uh, it didn't quite go as far as I would like, but I'd say so far so good. I'm definitely sweating quite a bit, but uh, let's get that other half mixed up and poured down and uh, see how far it'll go. My drill died, but I grabbed another one. So we're rolling. Same thing as uh, the other batch, mixing it up for three to five minutes, which to me means four, and then uh, just let it sit for a little bit. I'm kind of peeking and see the floor. I'm actually just gonna set this down real quick because I want to see it. <laughs> it looks super pretty. It's kind of got some interesting streaks in it. I'd imagine just from like moving it with the 
the wood, but I don't know. It doesn't look like the marks I was making, but it does look cool. You can tell the van is slanted a little bit forwards because that's kind of like the way that the resin's moving. I'm not too worried about the closet space because I can always uh, put something else on the floor there. It'll be basically covered up. Same thing as like the inside of the kitchenette. I'm not worried about pouring that. Hopefully, with the uh, the next pour, when I get some more ordered, uh, this is kind of seamless. I don't know if spreading it out thin would help with that, but I don't know, we'll see. All right, I think that's good. Oh, you can definitely see in the back, that's like smoothed out really nicely. The spots on the kind of the edge of that, I basically just smeared out. So like I was saying, hopefully when I do this final piece, that last pour, um, it just kind of blends seamlessly with that. Cause this is gonna be set by the time I get the other stuff in the mail, so. It is looking really nice though. I know uh, the sun's kind of throwing it off. So it looks different up here than in the back, but I think that's laid down really nicely. I mean, it does have those streaks in it, but we're just gonna say that's part of the design. There is a little bit of a divot right there because of where those the two pieces of plywood meet. And maybe I just scraped it too much over that. But when I do the final section, I might put a little bit more there too, just to cover it up. Cause you can still see uh, like the wood through it. It's gonna take 24 hours to cure. Um, we'll see how long it takes me to get resin, hopefully with Amazon Prime, not that I'm plugging that, but that's where I'm getting it from. Uh, hopefully I can get it here pretty quick and then I'll do that final pour, show you how it looks. So it's been two days since uh, the last clip, since I poured the floor, I was able to order more resin um, the same day and pour the, uh, the last section that night. So here's how it turned out. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The issue is there's like a distinct difference between like the section that I poured and then let kind of dry for a couple hours. And then the last section that I poured, um, I mean, visible as well as like you can feel the bump. It also kind of settled uh, in one spot. You can see like there's a color difference from like here and here because the van was like slightly angled. So as it like hardened, it was still kind of moving into this corner. So it, I mean, it shifted more than I expected it to. I knew the van like wasn't like completely level. Um, but I think the biggest issue was just doing that last pour after this section had hardened. So what I'm gonna do, oh, and I, I guess I can show you the back too. Overall, I think it turned out super pretty and it's, uh, I mean, I've walked on it and it's, it's solid. There is like, you can see the crease from where the boards met because they weren't completely smooth. But the back section I'm not too worried about because that's gonna be under the bed. But for up front, I'm gonna pour another batch just to get that all like evened out. Um, and I think I will use the heat gun. I'm not worried about like the bubbles. I think it actually kind of gave it um, a little bit more of a texture look to it, but I'm gonna use the heat gun uh, because it, it blows air. And so that'll help, I think, to move the resin around a little bit. 
Um, so I'm not really concerned about getting the bubbles out as much as I just want it to be smooth, especially around that area up front that's not even. So since I walked on it, I will have to wipe it down because um, I don't want you know stuff in between those layers. Yeah, let's get uh, one more batch poured, get that put down. And then, I mean, I'll show you how it looks. It won't look too much different. I'll have to do a follow up tomorrow once it's hardened. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. So we'll see uh, how difficult these boards are to get off too, because uh, those are screwed in to the side of the plywood. But I think once I unscrew them, I should be able to just kind of tap it with a hammer and break it off. So I don't know, we'll see. I can't remember if I mentioned this already, but I did uh, put some more boards under the front tires and then checked with the level to make sure the floor was closer to being level. And uh, it's pretty close now. Definitely better than it was before. So it should be easy to uh, kind of get it down there flat. All right, round two. Um, I guess I'll just pour it, come out the back, and then I've got the heat gun just by the door right there. Um, and I'll use that to kind of push around any that I need to, I guess. And then I'm still using a stick like I did last time, um, just to help spread it. I didn't even aim it. I just put a whole bunch down at once. You can definitely tell right away that it's more level because it's like spreading naturally in every direction, which is good. I don't know exactly how this is supposed to work, but. Just looking for any high points and trying to kind of push it around. Seems to be working pretty good, but since I don't know exactly what I'm doing, I guess I can't really say. Looks cool though. I'm making a cool floor inside my van. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's like a liquid that you pour and then it gets really hard. Yeah. yeah. I think my camera cut out at some point yesterday or it was like already recording and I hit record again, which then like stopped it. I don't know. So we'll see what I have uh, up until this point. Um, the last clip would have been from yesterday. So the floor is like completely hardened again and uh, definitely more of a marble look compared to when I did it the first time because of using the heat gun and like pushing it around. I have like this weird glob spot here where I think I was just heating it too much and trying to move things around to cover up that initial like kind of uneven spot, whatever we're calling that. But uh, overall, I'm super happy with it. It looks awesome. 
And uh, there's spots like on the left side too. Um, they look, I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like it's not even, but if you put your hand across it, it's smooth. So I don't know, just something from the multiple layers that I put down, I guess. I will say that one of the things that I've definitely taken away from this is I should have done my due diligence on like how, like how much space I could cover with the amount of resin that I got. Um, Cause I definitely would have gotten more initially. And also if I had done this before, I would have known, oh, I should just pour the whole floor um, rather than like doing two separate pours. Cause that's what the instruction said, but I feel like I definitely could have done a bigger batch, done the whole thing all at once, um, done it thicker and then it would have like spread itself even. Um, yeah, also like having the van completely even for the initial and only pour would uh, would work a lot better than what I did. But regardless of that, I mean, you can definitely see like the imperfections or I don't know how well you can tell on the camera, but you know, there are some spots that aren't completely smooth. And I mean, this section you would have seen during uh, like after the initial pour because that was done as one of the first sections but anyways i'm pretty happy with that i think it looks sweet and uh, it's definitely unique so i will end up putting like a small rug by the side door that way when you come in you have something to wipe your feet off on or just take your shoes off and leave them there whatever but i still need to uh take these boards off of right here and then off the side door so let's grab a drill and hopefully those come off pretty easy Screws kind of stripped in there. A couple of them are coming right out. And that shouldn't be an issue because if it's spinning freely, then I should still be able to pull on the wood. Oh, it's coming right off. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> that worked so good. There is a tiny bit of an edge on here, but that's all right. I can just file it off. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, there's a little bit of an edge. So that's gonna get a, uh, a metal trim piece going across it. I had a couple pieces of the board kind of stick to it. And also some of the resin got in between the wood, but it didn't drop down on the actual van. I came off pretty nice though. Like it wasn't too difficult. Um, some of those screws, uh, they were mostly pulled out. I just couldn't get them all the way out of the wood because it was just like, cut up in there let's uh let's get that side one the side one i had to put on a little bit different so this one is screwed in from the top rather than into the side uh because i couldn't get the door closed with it in the side because the floor already sticks out like i'm maximizing the space so putting another board in front of that didn't work and I didn't want to leave the van open just like on the street. Nice. 
Oh, you can see the resin is like so much thicker in this corner because of how the van was initially sitting. So it like sloped into that spot. And this, it still has an edge as well. But yeah, you can see right here, it's like a lot thicker. Um, but this will still work out though, because I'll just put the, the metal lip just right onto the wood rather than over the resin. Uh, and I'll still have to file that down as well, just to make it smooth with that metal that I'm putting in. But it came off nice. I'm glad that worked. And then this board as well has to come off. And that's pretty loose. This one I actually, uh, I just used hot glue on it because it was too difficult to like get around it with screws. Oh, there we go. I mean, as far as functionality goes, that's so nice. Like it stayed on really great, but also it was pretty easy to remove. I'm really happy with that. Oh, beautiful. That electrical tape's just coming right off. That worked so nice. That came out so clean. And then, uh, same deal with this edge here. I'll, yeah, I'll just have, have to, uh, kind of level them all out. But, I'm super happy with that. So there are definitely plenty of things that I learned that uh, if I was to do this again, which I might, who knows? Um, I'll, yeah, I'll definitely incorporate some different things. Overall, I'm uh, really happy with how that came out. There is, you can see like the difference in the pores here. There's a lot more uh, kind of marble effect up front, but everything behind like that point there will be covered by the bed and then like some other uh, like drawers coming out. So you won't even see anything back here until you open the back doors and then, you know, whatever's not covered by just like stuff that's being stored back here. So I don't know, I'm happy with it. I'm uh, definitely not a pro at using resin <laughs> or doing pretty much anything that I do, but I like how it turned out. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one.